Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2017. We are here at the Technical Forum and right now we're in a series of six presentations regarding hydrogen production and energy storage. And the fifth presentation of this morning will be with a special guest. Um, he founded the European Fuel Cell uh, Conference in Lucerne in 1994. And I'm very much looking forward to have him today as a guest here. He will talk about why an OCV of 1.23 volt cannot be obtained. And it's the Fuel Cell Consultant of Almus AG Ulf Bossel. Welcome on stage, and the stage is yours. Looking yep. forward to the presentation. Hello. No. Back next. <coughs> you all know this um, equation. Oops, sorry. A laser. Okay. You know this equation. You know this equation. According to this equation, this the um, Faraday equation. You compute an open circuit voltage. It should be at 25 degrees. 1.23 volts at 700 degrees should be 1 volt because G is the function of temperature. Now, unfortunately, let, let me see where we are. We have here four solid oxide fuel cell uh, characteristics. And uh, we have four solid uh, open circuit voltages for those curves. Perfect fit. If we go to the PIM area, we have four from renowned laboratories, four voltages. Theoretical should be 1.23, which is up here. And you see that there is a completely different behavior. We have no fit, we must assume that there is a systematic error in the system. Now the question, what is it? Fuel cells are sp spontaneous reactions. That means we cannot force a fuel cell to work. We can force the electrolyzer to work by applying high to higher voltage. A fuel cell, we have to take what nature provides. It's a spontaneous reaction. And what the hydrogen oxidation is concerned. We have this limit of spontaneous reaction of for spontaneous ignition of hydrogen at 585 degrees. Above that, we have the spontaneous reaction as we saw in the solid oxide fuel cells. That works. Below, we cannot have this reaction anymore, but it's a different reaction. It's the H and O joins to a hydroxyl, and that determines the low temperature OCV of a fuel cell. This reaction is followed by two chemical reactions. The chemical reactions provide, they are exothermic, one is endothermic. There's a heat balance which has to be established in the when, when you start a solid oxide, a uh, uh, polymer fuel cell. Now I call this the high temperature oxidation, the low temperature oxidation of the high temperature OCV, low temperature OCV. And the conclusion is that below 585, the spontane no spontaneous high temperature oxidation is possible. Now let's see how, we, how that works. Here we have the high temperature oxidation, solid oxide. Oxygen comes in, splits up, meets the hydrogen, and you get water. There's a line of symmetry. The next one shows us the line of symmetry and shows the, the electrons. There are two electrons going from anode to cathode. And uh, we have one, two electrons with one charge step. It goes from zero 
to plus uh, from 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 here to zero. What well, anyway? It's it, 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 it's one change of polarity. If you go to the polymer fuel cell, the low temperature, we have hydrogen is dissociated, hydrogen protons go to the, uh, arrive at the cathode, they meet in oxygen, and OH is formed, OH is formed, and now there's a bit complicated process. Two OH go together, form water, one oxygen is split off from, no, well that's, that, that's not water, that's um, peroxide. One oxygen is separated and water comes out of the system. That oxygen goes back to the front line, beats another hydrogen. There's oxygen coming here, also meeting this point. It means you have a completely closed circuit of chemistry. Now when you go to this line, You see that here, hydrogen protons meet and end up with negative charge. That means the electron, there's one electron exchange, but the electron goes through two charge levels. Goes from plus to zero and zero to minus. That means we have two changes of polarity. Now, the high temperature oxidation is clear. The low temperature oxidation, I have to, we have to modify the Faraday equation by adding the number of charge changes because it does not make a difference at all. If two electrons are dropped to one level, or one is dropped through two levels. It's the same charge, it means it gives, you, it gives us the same open circuit voltage. But in this case, it's important to consider these charge shifts. And based, oh, so back. Based on that, I arrive at an open circuit voltage of 0.876 for the low temperature oxidation of hydrogen. That means for the PEM fuel cell. And that is a steady state. Here are the numbers and so on. Now let, let me see where we are. That is a, take, a data taken from Peter and Wiley. It's, it's published 2003. The OCV, 0.876, is there, and that would be the line. Let's go to the next one. These are five, five cell stack. OCV would be here. Here's the curve. Let's go to the next one. This is a... This is a um, oh, let's see. 20 cell stack. OCV 0.875 times 20 gives you this number. Here's a curve. That's a 42 cell stack. OCV curve. I think there's pretty good agreement. The, the only thing is that we see a higher OCV. And that is a, I call it a startup OCV. And then we see this fall. And the fall must be attributed to the thermodynamic equilibration because we have, as I said, we have two chemical processes on the cathode. The one is the, f the formation of hydrogen superoxide, peroxide, by the merger of two hydroxyl ions. That's an exothermic process. The next one is the um, hydrogen superoxide decays into water and oxygen, also an exothermic process. And these two, that means when we start in PEM, every time we change the current, 
then there has to be a new equilibrium has to be established, a thermal, thermal equilibrium in the, in the anode. And therefore we have this what people like to call the polarization. But it's just a simple thermodynamic process. Now, my hypothesis is the following. We have the high temperature and we have the low temperature OCV. At this point, 600, 585 degrees, temperature of spontaneous ignition, there most should be a transition from here to there. Except that it's difficult to show for PEM because we cannot operate the PEM fuels at these temperatures. But there are so-called cera uh, ceramic proton conducting fuel cells. That means it's ceramic electrolytes conducting proton, proton conductors operated at temperatures in that range between 400 and 700 degrees C. Except there's only very, very few experiments on the market. So I did my own experiment, solid oxide. There are three, three cells. Two bipolar plates have uh, temperature, thermocouples inside. And I got these curves. 410 to 700 degrees. I hope to see this jump. Here you see the um, open circuit voltage. Uh, and here you see the theoretical high temperature open circuit voltage. And there's the lower one would be, this one should be 1000. O six and it's a one o a bit more experimental error nothing else nice and systematic but here I found a proton protonic ceramic fuel cell operated at 550 that means below this temperature of spontaneous ignition and you see this curve looks very much like the PEM curves, except the low temperature OCV would be at this temperature here. And you see the curve is pretty much following. Now, I also said I had the startup open circuit voltage, which is here. The startup open circuit, I do not want to discuss here, it takes us a bit beyond. It's essentially the voltage which, which, which is established when the first electron makes it from the anode to the cathode. The first electron. And that is the startup voltage. And you see they have, we have a nice agreement here. There are some more curves of uh, protonic fuel cells. This would be the low temperature. That's the high temperature, and you see, and the, the temperatures are here in this range, and you see that there's no, not, no clear indication which they want to go, but they certainly be above the low temperature and below also the high temperature fuel cells. So I think we can assume that we have a low temperature OCV, and high temperature OCV, and then we have a jump at 585 degrees at the temperature of spontaneous ignition. Now, finally, what is the role of platinum? We always hear platinum is finely dispersed in, in, the, in the diffusion layers of anode and cathode. That means we don't need platinum at the interfaces between electrolyte and, and uh, electrodes where the electrochemical reaction occurs. The role of platinum is not um, involved in the electrochemical reaction, but it is, I presume, it is involved in the a, in a dissociation process of hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen at the anode, oxygen at the cathode.
this I guess. That means he, he, that this formation becomes possible because hydrogen oxygen is, is, is dissociated at the in, inside the diffusion layers of anode and cathode. Now, this gives me a final point now. That's what's the ro ignition role of hydrogen and oxygen at all. We know that hydrogen and oxygen can be ignited in the presence of hydrogen, of, of a platinum. And I have a platinum-coated zirconia wool, which I use in my laboratory to, to avoid that hydrogen gets out of the system, so it will just uh, be ignited, be, be, be converted to water when it leaves the system. So let's say we have hydrogen and oxygen molecules that go to the platinum surface. They are dissociated, then form hydroxyl. Two hydroxyl get, go together, and hydrogen is formed, and oxygen is formed, and water is formed, and oxygen is formed. But the important thing is that at this level, we have heat released, we have the temperature will rise, we have more heat released, temperature will rise further. Some heat is needed to split the hydrogen oxide, but the remaining heat is enough that eventually, locally, 585 points will be reached. We have ignition, and then we have a chain reaction. Ignition, of course, generates heat, and we have chain reaction, and we have fire. So, that we can, the fact that, that, that hydrogen oxygen can be uh, ignited by platinum is known since 1820 or so. Like the sequence of reaction, I go through these now before, I, but I told you what, it's, what it is. It's an it's a electrochemical process, but then there's followed by chemical processes with uh, heat generation and the thermal equilibration. And that means if this hypothesis, and I say it's a hypothesis, I am a scientist, and I know that other scientists in the have to check this and prove it, or not, or disprove it, whatever. But I will, would like to present a hypothesis, and that means we ha it has to be established, and if it's true, we have to rewrite the school books, because apparently I would say that for the past 150 years, the fuel cell people did use the wrong equation for the open circuit voltage, because it disregarded the fact of the spontaneous self-ignition. And that is the case whether we have hydrogen, op op hydrogen oxygen as in a gaseous state or whether we have it in a fuel cell. Okay. Now, thanks for your patience, and uh, if there are questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, looking at the clock, it will be a flying change, but maybe one quick question, but uh, he will be available for questions uh, right here at the Technical Forum afterwards. Is there a question right now? Otherwise, I have to say you have to save it for later uh, because we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One more time, I would also have some questions regarding the uh, European Fuel Cell Forum you've uh, founded in Lucerne, in Switzerland. Um, yes, thank you very much for your presentation, and we will <laughs> continue you, you, in a minute with the next one regarding solid oxide cell co-electrolysis <laughs> operation, new option for chemicals production with Dr. Mihail Kuznetsov. Please stay uh, seated. It will start in about a minute. Okay. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you.